I told you I'm a free associate. It could be that I had pot roast for lunch and I'm feeling good. And all of the uh, nutrients from meat, which I rarely eat, are finally reaching the brain. I've been starving. I grew up on meat and potatoes. It's very hard to give up. And by the way, worked for them. <laughs> they were stronger and smarter than we are. And see, all these people with good abs, they dropped dead at 45 in, in a marathon. Their Uncle Mo, who had a gut on him and, and swilled scotch, lived to 93. Well, anyway, that's a separate story. I don't want to overgeneralize. You know it's a joke. That there's no guarantee of either way. So I don't know if I want to continue to talk about politics right now or what's going on in the world with the Iran deal. It's a pretty sad day when you see sane generals, 200 retired generals and admirals saying this is the worst possible sellout of America by John Kerry and Barack Obama. And then when I listened to Kerry's speech today on the Iran nuclear deal, which they have already, once again, he's, he can't be stopped. This guy is the, the luckiest man on earth and the most Machiavellian at the same time. With the least, well, let's leave it at that. The most Machiavellian and the luckiest man, he's under a very lucky star, Barry uh, from Honolulu. Look how far he has gotten on such baloney. Look how far this man has gotten using affirmative action and race and complete and total shenanigans and lies to get where he is and he doesn't stop. Another man would say, you know, I got socialized medicine, which Hillary Clinton couldn't do. That's enough for me. Now I'm going to leave the people alone. I'm not going to force them to do anything more. But he doesn't stop. Oh, I got homosexual marriage down their throats. I showed those conservative Christians a thing or two. Another man would say, gee, what an amazing thing that is. That would be enough. Not for him. The very next day he was on his vendetta. Stop the Keystone XL pipeline to pay off Warren Buffett, in my opinion, who brings oil in on the railway, railway cars and doesn't want competition in the form of an oil pipeline. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's as simple as that. Politics work that way. One thing after another doesn't stop in his quest to decimate America and all of its values and turn this nation into something you could never imagine it would have been. And now he's on to his next signature event, which is giving the most terrorist nation on earth, Iran, and they are the most terrorist supporting nation on earth, who until this very day say death to America, death to Israel, death to America, death to Israel, rewarding the psychotic mullahs with, the, uh, with a pathway to a nuclear weapon for one reason only, or s at least one apparent reason, is because they are afraid to confront Iran now. Either we don't have the military capacity to do so, and I'm not sure we do. I think he has so decimated the military that I'm not so sure that a military campaign would stop Iran. The United States has been so decapitated militarily and so hollowed out, I'm not so sure we could take Iran's nuclear uh, capacities down militarily. I'm not sure we can do it. I think this man has been so effective in ruining the military, which is something that the left has wanted to do ever since I was a young man in college. They've been wanting to destroy the military and the police. I'm not so sure we could do it. But even if we had a leader who did want to stop Iran militarily, which we don't, because he doesn't want to, Kerry said, if this agreement is rejected, every possibility for worry, every possible reason for worry in the future would have to be confronted now immediately, which exactly is why they should be confronted right now, because Iran is relatively weak militarily. And by appeasing the mullahs in Iran, by capitulating to these terrorists in Iran, right now, appeasing, they're capitulating appeasing them right now. Do you know why? Because they're afraid to confront them right now or don't want to confront them right now. They're selling out to Iran because they want to triangulate Israel. There's only one reason for this, several reasons. One, you have to look at the money. Billions of dollars are going to be made by the gangsters who are behind the, uh, this administration. Billions of dollars will be made on every imaginable front. They are rushing into Iran to deal the same way they rushed to do business with Hitler. They're doing the same thing with the Hitlers and headscarves. You have no idea what kind of money, what fortunes are being made on this Iran deal. We won't learn about it for years to come. Are we going to get a presidential historian to tell you that? That plagiarizer, Doris Kearns uh, Badwin? Doris Kearns Badwin. Every other day, she's consulted as an expert on the presidency. The plagiarizer. They rehabilitated her. No, no, you have to use common sense. Billions will be made on this deal. That's number one. Number two, once Iran has nuclear weapons, 
Israel will be forced to give up Judea and Samaria to those people who are dedicated to destroying them. That's what Obama wants. Now, I can guarantee you something else. Mark this down this day. Mark it down. Make a note right now. When I, uh, Obama gets the deal, which he's just about gotten, he's outmaneuvered uh, his opponents. One again, once he gets this deal and Iran gets the weapons or is on the road to getting the weapons, he will get another Nobel Prize. That he'll have a, two, a twofer. He got one for being nobody just for being the first non-white president in American history. I don't know how else to put it, because it wouldn't be fair to say he's the first black president, given that his mother had something to do with his heritage, I'm sorry. Given that he was the first non-white president and did nothing to achieve it, he was given a Nobel Prize. So now we'll get a Nobel Prize for giving Iran the bomb. This is what the EU is made of today, and the, 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 the jerks at Sweden who, who give out the... Uh, the dynamite prize. I call the Nobel Prize the dynamite prize. It's ironic, isn't it? That the Nobel Peace Prize is living off the royalties of dynamite. <laughs> Trinitrotoluene. It's amazing to me how things work in the world. It's all a paradox. So he'll get another one for that. And you won't feel it at all. You won't feel it right now. You're not going to feel anything about Iran right now. They're not going to have a bomb tomorrow. Not while he's in office. Are you kidding? I can guarantee you. As I sit here, that even if they could have one tomorrow, part of this deal is please don't do anything while I'm in office. Please do it when a Republican, hopefully Donald Trump is in office, so we can blame him for all the problems in the world. You know, do it to him. Create trouble for him. So that's that story, which we can talk about. We can talk about Donald Trump on the show, which, again, I'm having an MP3 piece made of the interview if you missed it. And I'll put it on michaelsavage.com so you can listen to it at, you know, at your leisure, what they call download or whatever you want. Let's get some calls now on the subject at hand, which is the Trump visit. Many people are not too happy with him, by the way. Julie, WMAL in Washington, D.C., go ahead. You're anti-Trump. Why? Hi, I'm excited about Trump and everything he has to say. My one concern is that he doesn't seem the type of person with all the businesses he's run that he's not used to hearing or getting his own way. And, I, and in that way, I'd be afraid that he'd be like Obama. Well, like, that's, that's, a good, that's a good thing. We need someone who can get his own way and override all of the other opposition through sheer force of will because he wants to build a wall with Mexico. That's something he wants to do. I don't think you'd disagree with that, do you? No, I like what he wants to do, but I don't... Good. So what he wanted to do, get on his hands and knees and beg the ACLU or La Raza whether he can build a wall? He can tell them to go to hell. I'm building the wall. That's what we need is someone to tell La Raza to go back where they came from. Go back to the communist left in Mexico where you came from before you infected this nation with your big lies. and have, It's unbelievable to me. La Raza means the race. What nation on earth would let a racist organization like this dictate its foreign policy with Mexico? Tell me. I like... I just don't want him to think that he can override Congress because that would be hypocritical because that's exactly what Obama has. Well, what do you mean hypocritical? We've put up with a mini dictatorship now for all these years. A man who has changed the rules and then gotten gone around Congress to warp America. Don't we need someone to do the same thing to put America back to where it was, make America great again? Well, that's true. That's true. That's what In other words, you know, you could sit there and say I'm a constitutionalist and I want it done according to the law and I want it done crossing every T and dotting every I. And, you know, we'll get nothing. We'll get nothing done. We'll have another John Boehner. Clink, I call him. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You know, some songs get stuck in my head. I can't get them out. I wish there was a technique, like a tune in the head, I'm trying to substitute it with a, a prayer of some kind. Anyway, we're talking about the news of the day, borders, language, culture. Donald Trump was on the show. We're talking about the Iran deal. We're talking about the war on police started by uh, the community organizer in grief. We're talking about all of the issues of the day on the Savage Nation. If you care to join the program, uh, give it a shot, 855-400-7282. It's the Savage Nation. That's my dog, Teddy, shaking his collar in the background. He thinks that the show is over. It's not, Teddy. We've got 30 more minutes. Stop it. 
He leads me right into the radio couch. He knows the minute the show, dogs are amazing. He knows that the minute the show is over, the guy leads me, looks at me, and he looks right to the couch, and he guides me right to the dark room to, to lay down. I love dogs in there. Oh, my God, we're out of this now. The ratings are in. I'm thriving. Why are my ratings so high on WMAL in Washington, D.C.? They're through the roof. A 3.7 share with it. I guess I'm not allowed to mention it. A 9,300 AQH is pretty big. In, the, in Washington, D.C. So who's listening to me? I'm a phenomenon in, the, in Washington. Anyway, I'll be back to take your calls right here in the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. When we're riding in the car and we approach a certain place, he gets lovey-dovey and starts kissing my ear. He knows just how to go behind my right ear and kiss me where I almost go off the road. And I say, oh, Teddy, stop. <laughs> so they know love. They know love. There's a picture of me sitting on a lawn chair. I don't know why I'm drifting off. Maybe I just want to relax. It's coming up to Labor Day weekend. Forgive me for reminiscing. I have a picture on my desk as I broadcast of my last dog, Snowy, before she got sick. And uh, she was a Sheltie. Boy, did I love her. There I am with the garden hat, the chair. I look better today than I did then. But you think there's a heaven? I mean, Steinbeck said... John Steinbeck, you know, the American writer. I don't think he's taught in schools anymore because he didn't write uh, Jenny Has Two Mommies. John Steinbeck, one of America's greatest writers, wrote, he was an animal lover. You remember he wrote Travels with Charlie? <laughs> but Steinbeck wrote that when we die, we go to a place called heaven in which our animals, our pets, are the uh, rulers and we're their pets and they treat us the way we treated them. <laughs> So I know that I'm going to have a lot of roast beef and uh, carrots in the next world. Teddy's going to be probably having a new car up there. And I hope he has a dog radio show. I can sit under his desk and <laughs> listen. But, you know, you, you ask yourself these questions. They're silly questions in many ways. They're lightweight, silly questions. But so what? So what? It's a long day's journey in tonight for all of us, isn't it? Isn't it a long day's journey in tonight for you? And how long can you sit? You know, I listen to talk radio off and on. I tune in here and I can't listen to it. What I hear are like old college professors boring me to death as though every word they say is the gospel. And if you don't write it down, you're going to fail their exam. Who wants to listen to that? I say to myself, can't you make it entertaining? Can't you make it exciting? Can't you stop doing Bill Clinton imitations? Can't you stop talking about Hillary for 10 seconds? Nope. They go on and on and on. Everyone has their own way and everyone has to do what they think. So here we are sitting here watching the world go around. Bratton warns of tough times ahead for police. He's doing a great job, the police chief of New York. But I don't think I want to get off topic right now. Let's take some callers. Here's a, someone who says that this would be a bad idea. Linda on WBAP, what would be a bad idea? Hold it. Line five, Linda, what would be a bad idea from Dallas? Uh, earlier, you mentioned a uh, Trump v. Arena ticket, and I think that would be a bad ticket because uh, when she was at Hewlett Packard, she was a poor executor, executive. She failed to execute properly, which is the number one role of an executor, uh, executive. She exported 30,000 jobs from Hewlett Packard. You know, you're 100% right. You're 100% right, so we have to strike Fiorina from the record. I think that's why the liberals decided to have her on in the debate on CNN, because she espouses their philosophies. You're right, I forgot that. Thank you for reminding me. You know, we're, we're all uh, fallible. So I would say a Trump Carson ticket would be good. What do you think of that? That would be more palatable, but I think that even Carson, Dr. Carson, as much as I like him, I don't think he has the experience to be uh, vice president or president, for that matter. Now, that's an interesting statement. Let's, let's analyze that for a minute. Let's start with Dr. Carson's realities. The man is a pediatric neurosurgeon. That's a field you cannot fake. You cannot become a pediatric neurosurgeon the same way you can become a community organizer. You can't fake it. Nobody can promote you within those fields to perform neurosurgery on babies unless you're at the top of the, of the skill set. So we all agree that he's a super highly qualified and very intelligent man, right? Yes. Okay. Aren't those qualifications enough when you have such second and third rate individuals in government? No, not in and of themselves. He is a brilliant surgeon, but 